Hi, and thanks for coming to today's webinar about Azul's new capability called Code Inventory that's designed to help development organizations deal with the size of their code base for that custom Java application that you've been maintaining for a long time. I'm Eric Koslow, a member of Azul's product management team, and I've been dealing with producing Java virtual machines for over a decade now. Now, the thing that I want to talk about today is the difficulty that we all have with maintaining the code base of our large applications. This is that piece of software that you and your colleagues, your staff, your team, your friends have been working on over the last several years that's grown to just quite a few lines. Because the majority of the software, the time that you spend working on it, is really spent on maintenance. It's really cool to create something new, but you only get to create that new thing one time. The majority of the time, you're adding new features, you're changing capabilities, you're fixing bugs and making improvements. And when you go and you have to work on code that isn't active in your application anymore, and there's a couple reasons why we go to do this listed down on the bottom here, um, we find that we spend quite a bit of time maintaining that dead code, and it's just a complete waste of time. And why aren't development organizations and developers going through to remove code? Well, it's because we can scroll past it relatively quickly when we go to work on our applications, and that oftentimes we can tell when certain methods are used, but not all. So we really have low confidence of removing code because we don't want to worry about an app breakage. Now, the times that you do go in to actively spend time maintaining dead code in your organization, which you don't actively seek out to do, it's times like when you have to go and update a major version of a library. You go from one version of Spring to another. You change a major version of iText. Or maybe you're going through and updating between Java 8 to 11, 11 to 17, 17 to 21. These are times where we have to go through and get all of our unit tests to compile or to pass all of our code to compile. And you just have to maintain a lot of code, whether you really want to or not. Now, over the years, our applications just tend to grow in size. Maybe your application starts out absolutely perfect. Maybe you did a great job of producing the code and you have, let's say, no dead code in your application. Over time, you go to add some new features to it. You update between Java 8 and 11. You change a couple libraries. You change a lot of paths. You add new things. You comment annotations. And a small portion of your application starts to become dead code. You didn't seek to kill the, dead co to kill the code. It just happened over the course of your natural work. Couple years later, different people rotate in and out of the team. Maybe this is a team, you're the new manager of it. You'll find that this dead code tends to grow. And the reason that it grows is that we don't go through to actually remove it. We might remove all references to some lines of code, but really when it comes to cleaning up dead code, most developers don't actually go through and remove it. They just kind of leave it there because you can scroll past it and Java operates as a just-in-time compiler. So what's the performance risk? Well, the simple fact is uh, identifying dead code, when we just open up a file to go and work on it, it's not always obvious what level of code is dead. Can I remove a method? Well, you know what, I better not remove that because if I'm wrong, I'm gonna break the application. Hopefully that'll get caught by the unit tests. That would be a good case. And being right takes a lot of time and investigation. Now, what we've done with Azul Code Inventory is we've really improved the level of confidence that you can have as to whether or not you actively use code. And instead of you having to go through and look over log lines, um, figure out if a method has executed, do some level of static analysis, We've just repurposed the JVM's first call execution to track what methods run in production over time. So instead of having a big consequence to being wrong, well, you're still going to have a consequence to being wrong, but it's really obvious to know when you are wrong. It's really easy to look and figure out if a certain piece of code is still alive and that you should keep it because you've used it recently. And if you go look and you start seeing a lot of methods that, you know what, this never appeared inside my code inventory, 
it's code that you can probably remove from your code base to really decrease your maintenance cost and maybe not have to update all of the unit tests that go through and test that code because it could be a case that unit tests are the only thing keeping that code alive and they're causing you and your team to do a lot of extra work and spend a lot of time maintaining them just to get that green bar to pass for something that doesn't really do anything. Now the main point of code inventory is Azul code inventory can go and track methods down to the method level, which means across your code base, whether it's a million lines, whether it's four million lines, however large you, your colleagues, and those that came before you have gotten that code base, we can go through and help you pinpoint down to a method level what code you use and what code you are probably able to remove. And we give you a full accurate record because we've simply repurposed the JVM's first call execution to track whether a method ran at least once. If it ran at least once, you shouldn't remove it. And the reason that we have a high accuracy here is that we can actually monitor what goes on in your production environment without impacting the performance of your application. Because the JVM is already making this call, it's effectively just a log statement to gather this information. So you could monitor in dev and QA environments, but for a lot of applications over the last decade or so of test-driven development, maybe you have a lot of tests. If you watch what runs in your QA environment, it could be a situation where you're spending a lot of engineering effort, hours, resources, manpower, brain power, all of that work just to get a test to pass, but that test is the only thing that ever executes that code. So by tracking in production, we give you a full accurate record of all the code that you're using over the last duration of time for however long you've been looking, whether it's a week, six months, a year, or whatever duration of time that's going to be. Now, the way the code inventory works is we've really just repurposed the JVM's bytecode interpreter to the very first time that it calls a method, make a log of that. Send that information off-site to be able to aggregate it over all the nodes, all the virtual machines, all the containers where this application runs, and build up that collection of aggregate data to summarize, did I use this method over the course of running the application? Because if you used it, then you shouldn't remove it. And if you haven't used a method in your own code in you know whatever duration of time, six months, a year, well, it's probably time to clean that code up before you do your next Java upgrade from 21 to the next version that occurs. And the way to call and access this is we don't need you to go through a web UI. You can use a REST API to make a simple call into the system, which really helps you go and integrate this into any CI CD pipelines that you need in order to identify various tickets or help you figure out what code you have called and when you open a file, what methods in there you haven't run. Now the sample uh, report that we give here helps you pinpoint this code down to a method by identifying the source name, aka the jar file, what class it's in, and what the method name is. And we give two extra attributes to track this over time, the first scene and the last scene. The first scene is going to be the very first time that this record ever came through in terms of the method being executed for the first time by a JVM. But over time, as you restart that JVM, as you launch your application on new nodes, that last scene date is going to be updated, which makes it easy for you if you want to target a method or an older version of a library for deprecation, you can go through and tell, hey, is anyone still using this older library or this older API, or is anyone still using that function because we don't want them to? Before you remove it, you should make sure that that last scene method or that last scene date hasn't been updated in a while. Now, we do consolidate this data across runs of an application, because if you look at the way that an application works in terms of the number of methods, when we go to create a Hello World application, it has about 14,000 different methods. So if you think about 14,000 methods being recorded and you run that application a thousand times, you don't need 1,000 times 13,835. What we do is we say, this is the same application 
execution, we're going to summarize these runs together and we'll help you pinpoint what you're using in that application because ultimately it all tracks down to one code base that you're maintaining that you can remove code from. Now we do differentiate from things like static analyzers that people can use. We know there are a variety of tools that you can use to target dead code. One of them is a static analyzer where you can go through or your IDE and say, do I have any dead code? The static analyzers are really good at finding things based on reachability. So if you have a private method, that private method can only be called within a class. If I look and I see there's no references to this private method, then a static analyzer can say, yep, that code's dead, and the static analyzer would be right. But if we look at the code sample here, we have a public class, class, which could be called from anywhere because its access modifier is public. At the same point, we have a commented out annotation. You see the slash slash at post right there. That was an annotation that someone commented in the application at some point because this used to be a REST API. So that public POJO handle request of incoming, that is also publicly accessible. Technically, that could be called from somewhere else because the access modifier is public. The difference between static analyzers, which will only find your unreachable code, is that code inventory will help you identify all code in your application that's unused, regardless of the access controls on that code. So if the class class is never called from anywhere in your application over quite a long period of time, you can look there and say, you know what? When I go to do my upgrade between one Java version and the next, maybe I don't need this class anymore called class. If you delete that code and a unit test fails, you can look and say, is this unit test the only thing keeping that old code alive? Now, some common questions that we get relate to how this information is gathered and collected. One of the analogies we use to describe code inventory is the concept of a cluttered garage. Because as we go to build things and just acquire things over the course of time, maybe you have the box to your old MacBook, you have the box to your old iPhone. A large number of people in technology, we have that box of old cables because, you know what, I could need those cables somewhere. If I throw the cable away, I won't be able to charge whatever device this goes to. But over time, we lose the device. You know, maybe you've iterated through that laptop, but you still have the box sitting in the garage or sitting in the closet. Every once in a while, you need to go through that garage and get rid of things. Instead of you having to go through and pick everything out there, what we can do is we can gather an inventory of what have you actually touched or used within the last year. Each time you go in the garage, you don't have to do your big cleanup, but go in there, pick up something that's not on the list, and get rid of it. This will help a lot of people maintain a much cleaner lifestyle, and we can help clean up our code bases in the same way. So some of the common questions that we do get about code inventory is, does this extend into third-party libraries? Yes, we can give you detailed insight into what methods uh, your organization is using within third-party libraries, but the goal is code deprecation to simplify the maintenance and make yours and your developers' lives much easier by cleaning up that large code base that's just gotten a little bit too large over the years. And you can't remove code from a third-party library, so although you'll have the information, it's a bit less actionable. In terms of granularity for storing the data, we need to summarize this across the role of multiple runs. Because when you look at the concept of targeting code for deprecation, it doesn't matter if you used the method last Tuesday between the hours of 9 and 11. Um, what matters is, have I used this method recently, yes or no? So it doesn't matter which particular node. If I'm watching my production environment, it's essentially a Boolean of did I run this method, yes or no? Because if the answer is no, then it's probably a method that I can target for removal as I'm going through and getting that nice, sweet satisfaction of deleting and deprecating code.
Otherwise, can I use code inventory versus static analyzers? We know that your IDE can give you dead code notifications. Sometimes you'll get that warning down there at the bottom. There are other tools, but the static analyzers tend to focus on the role of reachability, whereas code inventory monitors your production execution and brings back to you what information are your or what methods are your customers actually causing your application to execute. You can bring it all together and figure out what code you can start to deprecate and remove from your application in order to make your maintenance life much easier. With that, I just want to say thank you very much. I hope that we can help you maintain much easier Java applications, really improve your development life cycle from a role of developer happiness. There's nothing better than that satisfaction of deleting code, hitting a git commit that only removes things. And from a cost management perspective, it's great to be able to reduce your team's maintenance burden and pay less on future work. Thank you very much and reach out to us to talk about code inventory. Have a great day.